So, we will begin. So, last class we were looking at uh, the advancements that were made in GMAW, right. So, we looked at two important advancements, the pulse GMAW and then uh, we looked at uh, the control source coding deep transfer, okay. So, we were looking at uh, the waveform characteristics of both the processes and then how we had achieve the metal transfer uh, which is required for in both the processes which is unique for pulse GMAW and then control source coding deep transfer in both the cases, right. Okay, so, uh, it is very important to understand uh, the significance of these uh, waveform control to achieve the desired metal transfer, right. So, these uh, waveform control during uh, welding is achieved by the power source, the advancement that we saw in the power source manufacturing, right. So, the, uh, the microprocessor control rectifier inverter power source. Now, which could give us uh, the control waveforms because these waveforms are smart. They will have to talk to each other, the various aspects of the welding system should be talking to each other. Otherwise, we cannot achieve the waveforms, right. And the, for example, in control source circuiting transfer, uh, the wave, waveform, if you look at it, it is not like in a simple pulse or simple DC, okay. So, when you look at the current versus time, so initially we have an uh, arcing current and then uh, during uh, uh, welding. So, we do not keep the current constant throughout the pool or we even do not do a just simple pulsing, is not it. So, so what we do is uh, upon achieving an, a, a droplet at the electrode tape, the, the wire is moved and during this process when the wire is actually moved towards the well pool, the current is also decreased. And then uh, the moment uh, uh, the source circuiting is established, so we reduce the current to a very low level even sometimes even to 0. So, that the, the, the droplet is not exploded because of the accumulation of which the uh, Lorentz force inside the droplet, right. So, the current is decreased considerably to maintain the droplet intact and then uh, we give a delay. So, in that delay, so basically what we do is we immerse the droplet in the pool and then subsequently we retract the wire and during this process we increase the current slightly in such a way that we form a neck and then because of the surface tension of the liquid pool, the droplet can be detached to the pool and then uh, the, the wire when see, once it actually retracted back and upon reaching a, a, a typical arc length, we start an, another increasing current to ignite the arc and subsequently we can follow the same step, okay. So, this would be yeah, same current level. So, this is arcing current, right and this is the source circuiting phase, okay. So, source circuiting phase generally, so it will be somewhere over here until this, so now we will have to make uh, our system as smart as possible, right. We will have to have um, uh, uh, the control over the wire feeder. Right, and then so we'll also have to measure the short circuiting event. So then we'll also also have a voltage sensor, isn't it? So voltage has to be measured so that the moment the short circuiting happens, we'll have to make the current to a zero or low level. Right, and then we'll have to do the calculations about the melting rate so that we also know so when to retract and when to send the wire towards the work pole, well pole, right. So, and then we also need to have a power source capable of changing the current abruptly, okay, as in a waveform I showed you in this picture. So, we also need to have an, an, a, a power source capable of generating the waveforms with the current varying from say in this case 300 amperes to uh, 0 amperes and this time entire cycle can be few microseconds, okay. Suppose if you are doing a 50 short circuiting event in a second, okay. So, that is the, uh, the time control we need to achieve to get this waveform. So, the power source would be capable of generating such pulses and the variation in the current and then this cannot be carried out by conventional magnifier, uh, uh, magnetic amplifier power sources okay or in you know, a simple transformer uh, power sources. So, we need to have a rectifier inverter system, right, with the microprocessor control. 
So, then only you can achieve these power source. So, once you achieve that using an, 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 an online sensors, we can measure the voltages and the melting rate can be calculated basing, using the equations I told you, right. And then we can develop an individual welding program for a given composition of the wire and the diameter of the wire. So, these advantages are all possible as I said because of the advancement, the understanding in physics of the welding process. So, once you have, once you know that what is going on during welding, so then we can all play around, okay. So, when you are source circuiting, you can't just like the trans circuit, okay, it will explode, right. The well pool will collapse. So, then we will have to manually adjust the current and uh, the voltage waveforms and then identify what is the effect of waveform and source circuiting. Then we can program it to make it automated, right, it is clear. So, again the moral of this unit lesson is understand the physics so that we invent new things, right. That is important. So, it is not like repeating someone or something else. You always understand, try to understand the physics behind the process. So, then you can uh, play around and then invent so new methodologies, new processes and uh, which are any ultimately beneficial for various applications. So, now the cold metal transfer, source circuiting transfer is very widely used for various sensitive applications because you can use now GMAW, it is like a transferring uh, a, a casting process because the melting point, the droplet temperature is not going beyond the melting point, is not it? So, you are transferring a li molten liquid from uh, a uh, ladle to a uh, well pool, it is as simple as that. Okay, so, you are just giving in a molten liquid which is at the melting point, close to melting point. So, that is why it is actually very beneficial because you are not superheating the well pool and you are not increasing the heat input, okay. You are also not affecting the, the surface microstructure, right. So, uh, now that is the reason why this process is very widely used nowadays for welding dissimilar welding, uh, dissimilar materials. For example, uh, steel and aluminum weld. So, you will have to avoid intermetallic formation. So, then you will have to minimize heat input or energy, right. So, this process can be used very widely because you are just wetting, right, it is clear, okay, good. So, now we will move on to the, the last welding process in uh, consumer welding is uh, submerged arc welding, right. How many of you seen submerged arc welding process? None, right. We used to have one uh, very nice setup in IIT Madras. So, unfortunately, we condemn that setup. It is actually a very neat setup, okay. The process itself it is same as uh, uh, GMAW, there is nothing different, okay. So, so, the schematic and everything is similar. So, we use a consumable electrode without any flux. It is like a, 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 a wire ele electrode. The wire thickness is much larger than, larger than what you use in conventional GMAW. Conventional GMAW is 1.2 mm, not more than 2.2. Whereas in submerged rock welding, we can use much larger diameters, okay. So, we looked at the efficiency when you are looking at the efficiency of the process, the efficiency determined by, okay. So, whether you are using of course, the uh, electrode positive or negative. Suppose if you are using an electrode as an anode, right. So, if it is uh, the electrode is a positive. So, then the efficiency determined by what factors? QA, okay. What is the equation? What is the efficiency when it is used as an, an electrode positive in GMAW? Forgot. Come on, guys. It's not long ago. So, what is the QA? How do you calculate the heat of the anode? Huh? I'm older than you guys, right? I still remember. Okay. So, VA by I plus C A V column by plus work function not the cathode and then I plus V by 2 K. What is K? The poor poor guy, right? And then T column T T anode, isn't it? And then I something missing. You referred to your notebook, right? Yes, very good. So, now the, 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 the important part over here which controls the efficiency, of course, if it is positive, if it is anode, then this becomes positive. 
is not it right. And uh, in a consumer welding process efficiency is QA plus QC divided by 2 is not it right. So, if it is an average because the heat is already going into the QC right. So, now in this process the important parameter which determines the process efficiency is the, the amount of heat coming from the arc column to the anode or cathode is not it because this is fixed okay. So, these are all fixed the only parameter which actually here can affect the efficiency is the C A factor the factor the amount of heat is coming from the arc column to the anode or cathode that determines the efficiency of the process okay. Again how does the heat transfer from uh, the arc by conduction convection radiation right. So, the heat transfer or heat loss from the arc is defined by the, the conduction convection radiation which we will look at right. So, now suppose if you want to increase efficiency, so we will have to minimize the, the heat loss from the arc. So, that the amount of heat from the arc column goes to anode and cathode can be maximized right. If you contain the heat loss from the arc right to only to anode and cathode. So, then we can increase efficiency with the process extremely high is not it. So, this factor C A become close to 1. So, how do we do that? Then we will have to protect the arc is not it from the atmosphere. So, that we can avoid the convection and radiation heat loss. So, how do you have to protect the arc? We cannot just simply you know you put a mask or something like that that is not practical. So, what people thought about it ok. So, this guy the heat which is actually going from the arc to the anode and cathode determines efficiency. If you maximize the heat transfer from the arc column to the anode and cathode. So, we can also heat the anode and cathode much more effectively is not it ultimately the Q A will go high right. If a C A factor is increasing if it is close to 1. So, what they thought about ok. So, instead of having a uh, uh, flux coated on electrode we cover the arc with the flux right. So, you have uh, an electrode ok and then coming. So, this is the base material and it is an arc and you have additional chamber and you pour fluxes flux particles surrounding the arc and electrode. So, the entire arc is covered with flux that means that the arc heat loss is extremely minimized because the flux would contain the heat in the arc and the heat from the arc would be transferred to the electrode and the base material and in, in this process the flux will also melt and that can also favorably influence the, the arc stability and the metal transfer. Like suppose if you have a titanium oxide rotile based fluxes right. So, that can also change the, the surface tension and then increase uh, the uh, metal transfer uh, 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 frequencies right. You can also change like we looked at it right when rotile based electrodes how the metal transfer change. So, by adding fluxes as an envelope to the arc. So, we can also protect the arc we can maximize the heat transferred from the arc to the anode and cathode and doing so we can increase efficiency melting efficiency again when you calculate in M. So, we used uh, the same terms is not it the melting rate right. So, the, this term is still there. So, we took the i out and then m becomes alpha i plus beta l i square divided by so yeah. So, when you do an alpha and beta again the same equations whether it is an anode or cathode the electrode we use the same equation is not it to calculate to derive at uh, the melting rate. So, we can also in increase the melting efficiency by increasing this factor the amount of heat transferred from the arc whether to the electrode uh, or the to the work phase right. So, in this process so what we do is in submerged dark welding process the efficiency can be increased to close to 100 percent ok. The efficiency of the submerged arc welding process can be as well as 100 percent by completely protecting the arc from the atmosphere by fluxes ok. So, that is why it is the process is known as submerged dark welding the arc is submerged in flux and by doing so we can increase the efficiency of the process 
and we can also increase the productivity. So, we can use a much larger diameter electrode so that we can weld or we can melt more volume, is not it? Because the, the, the heat is effectively transferred to the electrode tip. So, we can melt more for a given unit time. So, instead of using a 1.2 mm diameter of the electrode, we can use 3 mm, 3.5, even 4 mm, and we can effectively melt and then deposit because we have more heat available. The arc heat can be uh, uh, contained. So, by doing so, by melting a more uh, the larger diameter wire, we can also weld thicker sections, right? Because we, uh, we, we can generate more liquid which can fill uh, more volume of the base material, right? And all came from the fact that the efficiency of the process increased by containing the heat radiation, heat loss by convection, conduction from the arc to the atmosphere. So, by doing so, we can melt more volume of electrode, we can create more liquid metal and if we create more liquid metal, obviously we can fill more cavities. So, we can weld thicker sections. So, for example, if you want to weld a 20 mm thick uh, a steel plate using 1.2 mm diameter in conventional GMAW, okay, we need at least 6 passes, 6 times you let do. Okay, so, you have a well cavity. So now, suppose if you have an, uh, such a well cavity, you need to fill it with conventional GMAW. So, we will have to do something like 6 passes you will have to do, if it is say 20 mm. Because uh, you cannot melt more than that, you know, because the heat loss is so high, then you will end up in a, in a, uh, not properly melting the wire. So, the same process if you use in a submerged arc welding, you can use much larger diameter. So, if you use 3.54 mm wire okay, and then you can melt it in a single pass, you can fill uh, in a close to 20 mm in a single pass. So, that means the productivity increases significantly, is not it? And uh, the, the cost of welding is also increased, it decreases significantly because you can uh, fill uh, the entire uh, cavity with one, uh, one pass. So, these all happen because of increasing efficiency. Right, it is clear. So, that is why we invent a sub submerged arc welding and basically it works the schematic is as shown in this uh, slide. So, we have uh, na, na similar uh, the GMAW setup. Okay. So, this is contact tape right? and we have an electrode. Generally, in, in, in a submerged arc welding diameter is much larger than the, the conventional electrode and we form an arc. By doing this process, we also send a flux to submerge the arc. So, you will not see the arc visible outside. So, this schematic you know it can be very tricky, but I will show you in video. So, it will be very clear. right? So, the flux would act as a, in the same way as it acts in uh, in a MMAW or in a flux code arc welding. We looked at in detail right. So, role of fluxes and in a metal transfer as well as to generate shielding gas if it is necessary. right? So, the all the functions uh, these fluxes can carry out. By doing so, so we can now increase the productivity by melting more. Okay? So, the, the video I will show you then it will be clear then we will come back to this. So, this uh, process actually what I show over here it is to weld uh, a pipe okay, of uh, 20 mm thick, thick. In a conventional GMAW and uh, we were using 6 passes. But by changing from that to a submerged arc welding, we could weld it in a single pass, right? Okay, so these are all uh, the the power source. Let's wait from the beginning. So this is the the schematic. So we are welding a, a two pipes joined. You see this, can you see an arc? No, right. So, you have a flux hooper coming uh, in this case in coaxially fed okay? and the arc is completely submerged and this flux can be recycled. Okay? So, no need to worry about it, we will not throw out any flux. 
and the wire is coming. So, it see the thicker thick section this in this case our 5 mm diameter the wire. So, wire is continuously fed. So, its voltage is slightly higher because of uh, the uh, higher the arc length as well as the wire diameter. So, in this case the pipe is rotating you see that it is already welded and uh, this 20 mm cross section pipe is welded in a single pass is not it. So, otherwise uh, you know if you are doing a, a simple uh, JMAW and we will have to do it in uh, say in this case uh, 5 or 6 passes. So, we could weld uh, very nice beautiful weld. It is always I feel uh, you know nice looking at fantastic wells. So, one pass 20 mm thick. Okay, so it is going to be repeated again. So, we are starting from here, in this case pipe is rotating and then you can also this process can be used for flat plates. So, so only uh, uh, problem here is we need to have an, a container for fluxes. So, it is not really a portable process ok. So, the flux has to be uh, now if you want to make it portable and you will have to carry every time a, a, a bag of flux with you with the hopper and the hopper uh, you know contains the flux. So, in this case uh, this guy, so it is like you know if you go to a uh, flour mill uh, you, you see you, 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 you actually pour wheat and wheat comes down and uh, you know it mixes, same case. So, this is a power source, so this is a, and a very famous brand Lincoln, but in this case you do not need to play around with the you know parameter pulsing parameters and all, we generally we do it in a simple uh, direct current uh, constant current and voltage configuration and they will have a very nice weld made. So, now such a high efficiency is possible because now the heat from the arc is not lost to atmosphere ok, it is very effectively transferred to the cathode and anode. And then uh, we invented this process because we thought that, so the, the factor which actually controls the, the, the efficiency the amount of heat transferred from the arc column to the uh, the anode or cathode can be improved by shielding the arc and we end up generating such process right yeah, it's clear okay so, so we'll stop and then we'll move on to the the some of the aspects and we'll end up okay so this is now clear right schematic okay so we have a hopper and then it sends so, in this case the schematic shows uh, not coaxially fed. So, coaxial feed means you know, the flux will also be going coaxial to the, the electrode wire tape. The video I showed you it was actually coaxially fed uh, as shown in this schematic. In this schematic we can also have uh, the, uh, the flux going and then covering the arc in, in a, like in a side base as well that is also possible right and then the flux melts and forms a, uh, a slag layer to avoid the oxidation. So, if you look at the well which is made immediately uh, it is not oxidized at all right, it has a complete protection the flux melts forms a slag layer to have a complete protection and then that can be removed. You see one guy was actually rubbing uh, with the uh, steel brush to remove the oxide fluxes. So, the process characteristics if you look at it the high deposition rates we achieve by having the high efficiency of the process, the efficiency can be 100 percent. If you look at this process, the heat is not radiated at all. You, you hardly see arc, isn't it? Okay, so the at, because we don't see arc, there is no visible arc radiation. You don't need protective glasses. So the workplace safety you know, can be you know really enhanced. So the arc radiation can be extremely pain. 
So, the for workmanship the welders uh, it is extremely important not to look at uh, the arc directly because uh, the ultraviolet radiations uh, if you look at uh, the wavelength it can go from 400 nanometer to 590 nanometers. In fact, it can go up to 600 even beyond right. So, and if you stare uh, the uh, these wavelength obviously the radiative heat transfer radiation can come to our eyes can affect uh, very significantly right. So, this process brings that advantage because there is no visible arc radiation. So, it there is a protection itself and which is beneficial right. So, you can uh, uh, yeah for a uh, workmanship it is very beneficial. So, because there is no arc visible arc radiation. The other problem over here in this process is uh, because we always have to carry the, the flux. So, the, the maneuverability is difficult. So, if you want to do it in down hand welding, how do you feed flux, right? So, in those kind of applications, it is very difficult. So, generally, in, when the pipe I showed you, and if you are going for an offshore pipelines, 